Hi everyone, welcome to Rose Hip Knits podcast. My name is Hannah and I'm recording this podcast from Northern Tasmania in Australia. This is episode 92 and my podcast is mainly about knitting and sometimes some other woolly things. I do some spinning and crochet. I do have an I do have a hand dyeing business, so sometimes I talk about dyeing. And um, yes, it's a chance for me to sit down and talk about things that I love and to catch up with all of you. So thank you so much for tuning in and being here. Thank you if you're coming back and a very big welcome if you're checking out this podcast for the first time. I hope you will enjoy. You can find me as Rose Hip Chick on Instagram and on Ravelry. I um, do try to keep all my projects in Ravelry and keep them updated with with the needle size and what yarn I use and any notes and stuff like that. So if there's anything that I show you that you're interested to know more details about, head to Ravelry and look for Rose Hip Chick and my project pages and you should be able to find what you're looking for there. I have not really been linking anything um, in the description box below or uh, on the blog or anything lately because, well, I didn't have time to do it for a while and I did not have any comments about that anyone was missing me doing that. So I thought it's probably just as easy to go and have a look in Ravelry if there's anything you're interested in. So I hope you all think that's okay. Okay, so it's my day at home today, um, just me and the chickens, um, I've been doing a bit of work this morning and now I'm having to do a break before I go and do the school pickup. Uh, it's a bit of a grey day today, I did have the lights on here in the studio but uh, they just created a really bad shadow, um, so I turned them off and I, I hope it will be okay. Um, so yes, today I'm just going to sit down here um, with my cup of tea and I have quite a few things that I would like to share with you. I am, I've am um, made a decision that I'm not going to talk about all the things that I'm working on this time actually because um, there are quite a few things that I've only done a few rows on and I have so many other things to show you anyway that I'm going to hold that back and I'll... I'll um, Talk about it again in another episode when I've done a little bit more on it. Yes. So today it's a bit of a grey day outside. I hope it will be okay. It's a bit chilly here in the studio, but it's so nice and cozy. I'm surrounded by wool, and um, yes, I am ready to share some of my knitting with you. It's almost all knitting today. I will share with you my current spinning project as well. Let's start. Okay. So what am I wearing? Here I am wearing my um, Franken uh, hack jumper, and I shared this with you last time. I had I had finished it last time, but it was blocking at the time I was recording, so I showed you some video of it um, pre-blocking. I call it my Franken hack uh, <laughs> or something jumper because I used the Magnolia pattern by Camille Vod, and I used um, a pattern called juvenile for the the textured um, striping. I um I did quite a bit of modifications because my gauge was different to the pattern, and I just sort of adjusted the size to what I thought would fit me well. So it's top down, has short row shaping in the back, which I really like, and um, I used my own hand dyed um, Secret Santa skein for 2018, so that was the, the Christmas Day skein for the advent calendar, um, and I called it the year when Rudolph got stuck in the Christmas lights, I think, because I thought it looked um, like all the colours of the Christmas lights, neony blues and yellows and pink and green, and then it has a bit of a very light browny grey base colour. Uh, and I really love it. I used three different skeins, that two that were quite similar and one that was quite different and I did helical knitting with the three skeins which was um, a bit of work but definitely worth it in the end. The pink is a mohair from 24 Mile Hollow Yarn Company. It's a 100% New Zealand mohair 
so it's and it's quite thin it's like a light fingering I think but it worked really well just to do a little bit of a textured stripe Um, it's uh, not as soft as a mohair silk obviously and I wouldn't I'll show you something else that I've, I've made with this but um, yes it, it worked well like this it's a bit fluffy uh, but it's fine it's fun so I did this is the juvenile pattern also had the this um, color work or stripe on the sleeve as well uh, I've t said last time that I thought the sleeves were a bit short but with the blocking they definitely came down to the the right length that I really like it is quite fitted but I don't feel like it's it's too fitted or that the neck is too tight it's it's really comfortable really soft um, I really like it I actually had not put it on since blocking it until this morning and I thought I'll put it on because I like to record the podcast so I should have it on and I put it on and, and I went to have a look in the mirror because I want to see what happened to the sleeve length and I looked at it and I just said perfect <laughs> I didn't even <laughs> it felt a bit silly talking to myself but it was just my reaction when I, I saw the length of it and, and the shaping on my body and I thought yes perfect I didn't look at myself I was only looking at the jumper um, but yes, I, th I thought after, well, that's probably a good sign that it um, turned out well. Yes, I'm very happy um, with this one. And it will definitely be coming to Bendigo with me. Anyway, that's what I'm wearing. I'm very happy with it. Um, and talking about this mohair, I have another project that I have finished, another jumper actually and this is the secret test snip that I have been doing that I have been hinting about but not been able to show you sorry I need a sip of tea and you have probably seen this one now this was just on Instagram and everywhere um, I was lucky enough to do another test tip, test knit for tin can knits and I made the love note and this is a little cropped top with the lace yoke. Uh, I made this for my daughter. It's a size 8 to 10. I just like making the child sizes when I do the test knit just to give me plenty of time to complete them. And also I had enough yarn in my stash to do it. And I don't think I had enough for anything myself. I mean to make it for myself. So what I used for this was um, this same mohair but in a blue, which is this one. I still have this much left. I used 75 grams. So I used this and I paired it with a Paul Scarn in the coast, in the J colorway I think I used. So I held those two together, which created, I think, I think a really beautiful color this mohair as I said is not the softest so my daughter she's quite sensitive but she will wear it because she likes it so much but she needs to have a long sleeve t-shirt under it and she was wearing it um just this past weekend when it was Mother's Day she put it on for our Mother's Day lunch which was lovely it was really fun pattern not very complicated uh, it does not use a lot of yarn I only used 50 grams of the whole coast and uh, 75 grams of the, the fingering mohair but it is quite cropped it goes down a bit in the back compared to the front I'm holding it the right way yes um like that and then it has sleeves that only go a little bit below the elbow I could have made it longer and I I was planning to make it longer because I don't think a cropped top is quite the right fit for my my daughter and she doesn't really like wearing dresses and things that would go well under and I think it's just a bit too cropped for a, a nine-year-old to wear with jeans <laughs> or leggings um, but she's been wearing it with a dress so that, that's fine but uh, because I realized that I would have plenty or I would have enough of the yarn just to, with the one skein of the holes I am um, decided to just make it the cropped it's a little bit longer, I think, than the 
the pattern cropped length. The pattern has both a full length and cropped length, and you can obviously you can adjust your sleeve length to what you want. I just did it until I ran out of, of yarn, I believe. So that's that one is Love Note by Tim Canvas, and it's beautiful. And I'm very tempted, um, but I don't think I'll do it. But um, I have a lot of this pink mohair left. I've only used a little bit from the scan that I had. And I have a Hulls Coast in the Sherry colorway. And I thought, you know, I, I would have plenty to make another one um, up to this size. I don't have enough of it to make an adult size garment. But I have enough to make another one in up to a size 10. So I thought maybe I should make one for my younger daughter in the red. And I think it would be fun to use the sherry pink in, in that one. Um, but then I'm not sure because I'm very aware of that she's growing out of all her things. And she already has a lot of hand-me-down hand-knits from her older sister. So I'm quite happy to make the, la the larger sizes or the, the sizes for my older daughter because I know that she wear them and then her sister will wear them. But when I make things for my younger daughter, um, she's the only one to wear them. I mean, I'll hand them on to other people, but um, it's, it's a lot of work. Um, I really don't know if they get a lot of wear. <laughs> so we'll see. But I, I could definitely make another one if I felt like doing so. So that's something that I have had completed for quite some time. I really recommend a pattern. I mean, I, I recommend any Tin Canny pattern. It, they're just great. Just great. And it was fun to do another double-stranded mohair and fingering weight yarn um, project. And as a thank you for test knitting, I received uh, this pattern, the published pattern, and this, I think there's another two patterns in the sort of collection that they just released. So I received those patterns, which is very generous, but not only that, I also got to choose um, one of their ebooks as a thank you. So I chose uh, the Strange Brew ebook, which is a book that I have been looking at buying for a very long time. And, and if you've been watching the podcast for a little bit, you know that I love to do colour work and I'm really into doing colour work jumpers at the moment. So I got the Strange Brew ebook and I've been reading that and I'm really looking forward to making my own Strange Brew colour work jumper. Be fun. Okay, that's that one. And then um as I said it was Mother's Day on the weekend and I decided that I wanted to do a special Mother's Day cast on. I have been wanting to use my minis from my advent calendar last year. I did not save any of the minis from the 2017 advent calendar that I did, but last year's calendar I saved two sets actually, a one on the the soft sock base and one on the sparkle sock base. And I've been wanting to make something out of it. I'm, I was really really happy with last year's advent calendar and the colors i had a 12 cold colors and 12 or 12 cool colors and 12 warm colors and if you've seen the podcast before and if you follow me on instagram you you know sort of what it looked like but i had a graduation of, of colors in the two sets um and i just i was really happy with them and i thought i just really wanted to make something for myself um, and I've been just trying to figure out what pattern to use and I've been wanting to make a wrap because I've been planning to make them, it's called the Planina wrap, I think so by Shara Lambeth and I have that pattern in my queue and everything and but I've just, I hesitate because I don't think I am a wrap person, I'm not sure that I will actually wear a wrap so I have not done that and I thought no I think I'll just make myself a jumper and I've seen so many beautiful um, jumpers of advent calendar minis and other minis. And Vanessa Kind of My Creative Garage, she made a flax light 
quick minis and that's gorgeous and I saw some other um, projects on Ravelry so I thought okay maybe that's what I'll do and I thought okay well I have plenty of minis I have more minis than I need to make myself the flax light and the flax light is a free pattern by Tin Canics. I think it's free anyway it's by Tin Canics, and it's just a basic fingering weight um, jumper I had plenty of the minis I have 24 minis is more than you need more than I need for my size so I thought I'll I'll choose which one which ones that I would like to have in a jumper for me and whatever is left I'll do something else and I thought oh, I should probably do a gauge swatch and instead of just doing a swatch I'll make a hat so I just searched in Ravelry to find a plain um, hat pattern that had the same stitch or same gauge as the flax light and the pattern that I found was one by um, Vera Valley Mackey and it, it's a, a hat that has color work on it but I thought I'll just make it plain and if I get gauge that means that you know I'll just I thought I, I think I know what needle size I need because I'm pretty much the same needle size <laughs> when I make things in fingering weight um, so I thought I'll start with that and then if I get gauge that's great if I don't get gauge I can just swap needles and just continue on the hat anyway it doesn't matter I made a, um, a cast it on with um, some of the yellow apricot colored minis from the advent calendar last year I cast on only for the child size because I thought I don't I don't need another hat and I don't want it to take too much time so I make a child size and my youngest daughter she quite likes yellow and of course if it has sparkles in it she lo loves it you can't see the sparkles but these are the sparkly minis so I started with one of the minis and it looks very much like it's pooling on the screen you can't see that so much in real life so I used part of one mini and then I did I introduced a new mini so I did one row of each I think just did that twice and then I went into the second mini skein and then I introduced a third mini skein and I did the same like alternating for four rows or so and created this hat and I was lucky enough um, to know myself well enough that I got gauge so that was 26 stitches um, 10 centimeters so I did this on well I think I cast it on day before Mother's Day thinking that that was the swatch and then I would cast on the flax light on Mother's Day but it turned out that I just completed finished knitting this on Mother's Day and I was a little bit hesitant to start the flax light because uh, I have some other jumpers that I need to work on but I know that um, it will work. I'm not 100% sure about the sparkle sock base as a whole jumper. It does have a, um, I don't know, it's a bit dry and crisp I feel, but I'm not sure. I might just need a wash. It's definitely not itchy or anything. Um, so I, I quickly put this on my daughter um, in the morning the other day before she was heading to school to get a quick photo. So I'll insert that. It looks a bit funny because I didn't get the hat on it properly, but <laughs> you can see it. And uh, yes, I'm happy with how the colours sort of faded. Hmm. So I did that. So I guess that the flex light using some of the other minis from the advent calendar last year that that's sort of um in my plans and maybe soon but maybe i've changed my mind before i do it so we'll see i think i need to cast on a jumper in something thicker than a finger away <laughs> but we'll see we'll see okay so they are things that i have finished and then i have quite a few things that i'm working on and I'll start with showing you things that I you have seen before. So I showed you last time I'm making a test knit for Shara Lambeth of Wachara Made Podcast. 
These are the Felix socks and I am making them in the Pirate Pearl yarn. It's um, Katrina from Newcastle, New South Wales. So these are my New South Wales entry in the Ossidaya Sokolong cow that we're hosting, that I'm hosting in the Rose Hip Knits podcast Ravelry group. I'm sure you have heard about this uh, in Geelong now if you've been um, following me on, on Instagram or you've watched a podcast or if you know of any Australian indie dyers, um, so they might have a link to it. Anyway, it's a year long niche long and um, it's all happening in the Rose Hip Knits podcast Ravelry group, so go and have a look there if you're interested. So I've completed my first sock and then let's see if I can find the project bag. And then I have only just started the second sock. Oh no, I've lost half my stitches. I've just started that and I'll have to take that out of the bag and save those stitches when I finish. Recording. Okay, let's see. If I have, oh, here's the. So it's pirate pearl yarns in the Blackbeard um, yarn base, which is a Polworth and silk. And I have been loving working with this um, yarn, and I love the um, the pattern. Um, it was a new way of making the heel for me. It's a short row heel, which I have done. I've made plenty of short row heels, but m mostly the fish lips kiss heel. And this was a little bit different with German short rows. Short rows. And I thought that I have done that previously. Um, but I don't think I have. And I really liked it. Once I, I understood it, I really liked it. So I've actually um, used that heel in another pair of socks that I'm going to show you soon. So that's the Felix socks. I'm not sure when they'll be published, but probably soon because the test knit has finished. No great pattern. It's a bit hard to see maybe what it looks like when it's on the soft block because it has the, the lace. Oops, sorry about that. Has the lace down the front. Hmm. And Shara actually has a sock knit along in her pod, in her Ravelry group at the moment. What Shara made podcast, I think it's called a rivalry group. So in May there's a sock knit along there. So I will try to finish my socks by the end of May so I can enter them in the knit along. What else? What else? Did I think oh, another thing. Before I continue with some socks, another thing that I have shown you that I have worked quite a bit on is this monster of a jumper. That I am making out of some sublime luxurious woolly merino which is a discontinued yarn that I got on a d-stash d-stash oh my words today I think I'm rushing too much it's 96% merino and 4% nylon and it's quite a thick yarn bulky maybe can't remember what the description is it says on um, on Ravelry I'm making this for my daughter she's having her birthday soon so I thought I wanted to make it for her because she's been looking at these really horrible synthetic fluffy jumpers in the shops and I thought I just prefer to make her something even if it's not 100% wool it's 96% wool so I have to be happy about that it's a boucle yarn I think it's called Looks like that, very fluffy. Um, I found a pattern called Nutmeg. It's a free pattern. I've got gauge for that, and it goes down to a triple extra small size. So that's what I'm making. And <laughs> I put, it, I finished the, the body, or I thought it was sort of a good size. I thought this is huge and I, I put it on and it fit me. Fit me as a fitted jumper. And I thought, oh my gosh, I've made this whole thing. I thought I'm not ripping this out. I'm just going to make it for myself instead. 
and that was in the evening and then in the morning I tried it on my daughter and it actually fits her as well just sort of a different fit more of a big fluffy comfy jumper I I made the body until I had finished I can't remember if it was like the third skein or something like that but I did not cast it off because I thought I'll make the sleeves first and then try it on with the sleeves and see if I want to make the body longer I'm also not sure how to actually finish it for the neckline I just did normal knitting I didn't rib it or anything so I'm not sure how to do the the bottom band or if I just cast off if that's enough but um, I started on the sleeve on one sleeve um, started by following the pattern but then I thought the sleeves just looked a bit started to look a bit small so I stopped doing any decreases and now I'm just knitting plain so that's what I've been knitting on a bit in front of the TV at night but it's um, I don't know it's a little bit not a struggle to knit on it but it's not a smooth movement it's quite you know, I have to pay attention so I don't catch the wrong part of it. I have to pay attention to make sure that I catch the whole yarn when I knit. And um, the I'm using Addies, and they're not very sharp. And so I just it's not I don't have a good flow when I knit on it. I'm just trying to be persistent and get it done because it does grow quite quickly when I work on it. But yes, that's that one so if it's going to be complete for the birthday I only have a week and a half so I might have to bring this out each night now up until the actual birthday she has seen it it's not a secret so it doesn't not really matter if she gets it on her birthday <laughs> but it would be fun always nice with something handmade let's check the time okay um what else so one thing that i seem to have been spending a lot of time on uh, since i last uh, recorded a podcast is um some socks some leftover yarn socks i um i have been talking about this designer before Vicky Vera. she's mia demo i think um Swedish designer and a hand dyer of yarn and she has a very well she has an amazing Instagram account really and one thing that she makes a lot of is what she calls rag rug socks so she has a pattern on Ravelry called rag rug socks and I've been looking at this for a while and I thought I have a lot of partial not just mini skeins of sock yarn but actual partial skeins because often when I make socks, I only use 50 to 60 grams of a sock yarn, and often a sock yarn 100 grams. So I have a lot of almost half skeins. And rag rag socks use um, two different skeins of yarn, and you alternate. So you do two rows of each and alternate through the whole sock. And I was looking at, was looking at, and I thought, oh. Surely, like, there must be somewhere someone tells, just explains how they change the colour to make it, do they do helical knitting or what's going on? I wasn't sure because there's two rows of each colour. In the end, because I thought I don't really need to buy a sock pattern um, just for striping socks. And especially since the the pattern by Vicky Vigera has a heel flap and gusset heel and I didn't really I don't really want to do that but in the end I thought oh, I'll just buy this this pattern it's not a waste of money and I think even she had a sale on it at that time so I got it for almost nothing the pattern it turns out there's no special way of, of changing the colors in the pattern you just change color you can do a jogless strap jogless is it jogless join or stripe stripe and I did that a bit didn't really make any much difference when you only do two rows of each color anyway I show you a sock using this pattern so 
I got out two different skeins of silk yarn. I'll show you what I have. So this was a um, Moto Vera Noir from Spotlight and this is an opal soft yarn. So I thought it would be fun to use two sort of purple colours together. And this is the sock that was created. So I follow the pattern except I did 56 stitches which is what I normally do but the pattern only went down to 64 or something. So um, do the cuff in one of the colours and then you start striping so you do two of each colour and you can see that in my two um, skeins of yarn there was this pink here that was really similar in the two different balls, two different yarns which is a bit of a, I mean they look fine but this is the, you know, what I was after. So the these two skeins did not work out really well together. They go well together, but I didn't get the complete effect that I was after. Um, and then because I had 56 stitches and the pattern did not have that, and the pattern had a heel flap and turn, I thought, oh, I want to do that because I've paid for this pattern, so I want to do it as uh, similar to the pattern as I can. So I found another pattern that I have made, a Tolua Socks by Holy Dap. Um, and that has also a heel flap and gusset on the 56 stitches included in the pattern. So I followed that for the heel and then completed it. And um, But yes, there was no special secret to how you change your colours or anything. You just change. So this is the side where I've done my changes. So you can see it has see they're not even stripes but on a pair of socks I can't I don't feel like that matters at all so I spent a lot of time googling and trying to find out find a way or find the secret on how to do this um to not get this the uneven stripes but in the end it looks like there's not actually a way um, to do it and doesn't really matter in the socks so anyway and I did do the jogless um, join or striping I can't remember what it's called I did that a few times but I didn't feel like it made much of a difference so I stopped doing it <laughs> so I completed the one sock and I have started on my second sock And I had already my yarn halved since from when I made the socks before. These are both, I have uh, socks made out of both of these yarns before, but I don't own any of them anymore. <laughs> um, but I knew from the socks that I had made that the one that has the, the white and, and black and the light purple. That just that just drives in those two different colours through the sock. Whereas the one with the dark purple, it has quite long colour sequence and the socks that I had made were just out of sync. So they were not matching and they were not totally different. They were just a little bit out of sync in the stripe sequence, which I I don't need matching socks when we but when they are just a little bit out of sync, I find it a little bit frustrating. So I actually did a bit of yarn management to get these to uh, to match. Not completely, but a little bit. So these, um, yes, have been taking a bit of my time because it's so addictive. <laughs> and it's, it's so much fun to see the colours work together and, and see them grow and, um, yes, and I did the heels and now I'm just, I've, I'm trying to use them as just a lunchtime knitting or having in my purse knitting because it's just plain knitting really. But I'm sure I'll have these ready for, in, well, in this month. But not only did I start these and almost finish them, because I was not, I mean, once I had seen these colour work, colours work up, 
I was curious about other combinations. So I went to my partial sock yarn stash and looked for other combinations. And I have, um, a few years back, I made quite a few socks out of the Drops um, Fable yarn. These are one of the pairs. These are the Socks on a Plane, I think they're called, by Laura Lindemann. They have a shorter heel, and I just, I can't remember if it's an afterthought heel or just shorter heel, but they're a pattern that I really like. These are really well used. I mean, you can you can say I don't I won't go into the whole drops thing, um, but um, I mean I can't deny that the drops fable yarn holds up really really well. So I had I've made a few of these pairs of socks, not all different colorways, and. I think Vicky Vera, this is a, what she she uses these a lot for her rag rag socks because they have a good um, striping for making the rag rag socks and getting a cool look. So I made used a few different colorways of the drops fable um, and have a lot of partial scales left. So I had partials of of this one and some other ones. This was another one I had. I don't have these socks anymore, I, they were uh, given away as a present. So I put those together and I only had about 12 grams of one of them but I had quite a bit more of the red but I couldn't help myself and I started making another pair. These look really loose, don't know why. So I'm using the red one for the cuff and the heel because I have more of that. I'm using my nine inch circulars and on this one because I had gone through the process of making the heel flap and gusset on one of them so I felt like I had followed the pattern the one time and I was happy so for this one I have used the heel with the German short rose that Shara has in her pattern for the Felix socks so in this pair I have used the short row heel and I thought that's that's good I've, if I have done both, then I can you know, try them both on and see what I like best for future socks. But you can see this is what you want a rag rug sock to look like. This is very cool striping. So that's what it looks like on the side where I have changed the colour. So I have started those, done the heels, so now I'm also just um, plain knitting. I knit a bit. I have some knitting in my purse for if I go in, as a passenger in the car or if I have time during my lunch break or when I sit and listen to my daughter at night when she does some reading I get a sock out uh, to knit on. So I'm, I'm um, yes trying to just use them as something that I do when I just have the time to do some plain knitting and something I can easily pick up and put down without getting confused. So <laughs> I have more, of, as I said, I have made other socks out of the Drops Fable. These are two pairs. These are, I think, my only pair of Hermione's Everyday Socks. And they're made out of um, the Drops Fable. And these ones, I think, are the, what is this, Jaywalker Socks? Made out of the Drops Fable. So these are all socks that, I don't know, go through. They are my normal rotation of socks they get washed in the washing machine on the wool wash program so I had these I have sorry I'm reaching over I had left I have leftovers of those so I thought I'll put them together in my next pair of rag rug socks so I have definitely been bitten by the rag rug sock um bug <laughs> because at the moment it's all I want to do and it's taking my um, thoughts and brain and yes everything away from the jumper knitting that I really want to do as well because this is just so easy and it's so much fun to see the colors um, grow and see what it would look like because you, you, you can't really tell and it keeps changing so it's just great it's so much fun 
So I thought I think yes, I have that next pair planned as well, and then I'll see what other fun partial scapes I have. So yes, I have been having a lot of fun with my Ray Rag socks. Um okay, let's see. It feels like I have been talking for a long time and I don't think this episode will be any shorter than the last few. I will not show you any dyeing today. I have um I'm actually in the process of updating my dyeing space and my setup. Um I just come to a point where I needed to replace a few things and I thought I'll just have a good think about it and set things up in a way that I am I can be efficient with time and you know look after my body with all the it's quite physical work doing dyeing so I I had a bit of a think about it and I planned out the setup and I'm just waiting for a few items to arrive and I'll set it all up I'll probably take a video for you so you can have you can see uh, but before I have sort of had different stations in the garden where I've been doing different things and I'm going to try to have it all in one space and set, set up in a way that I am being careful with my body and hopefully um, it'll be more time efficient and um, yeah so I haven't been doing dyeing for a little bit but um, it shouldn't be too long, too long now before I have everything set up and I'm really looking forward to um, doing that. So meanwhile I have been doing a lot of reading actually um, and watching tutorials about how other people have set up their dyeing and their process and I've been you know, even reading scientific, uh, scientific articles on leveling agents and dyeing on a industrial scale and I've, and I have really been enjoying it. Um, a lot when I do dyeing, it's a lot of just learning and discovering th things through experimenting. But um, I do really enjoy learning about these things, like the science behind it. Um, so I've been taking the time to do a bit of, of learning, and I have a lot of ideas popping around in my my head that I want to put into action when I have my new setup all ready to go. But I won't show you any, any dyeing today. The last thing that I would like to share with you is the spinning that I have been doing. Because I only just finished a bobbin before sitting down and recording today. So I really want to show it because I, I do that just for you. I have one bobbin filled with a Tasmanian Merino that I dyed probably a few years back now. Yeah. This is half of the top that I dyed, so this is 50 grams, I think. I, I don't know, I just, I just did it and it's very thick and thin. But what I want, I wanted to go with some of, oh I can't see them here, but I have some other, my hand spun here, two plies and they're quite thick and I just wanted another skein to go with those, so I think this will be fine. So I have the other half of the top left. and. Um, for the bobbin that I have filled up, I just spun it straight from the full top. With this half, I might actually divide it into strips and um, and die from that. Makes it easier. Makes it easier to make it even, uh, but it makes it might also um, blend the colour through the yarn uh, a bit nicer although it's just very soft variegated anyway so I don't think it will really matter but I'll do that I think they call it a fractal spin which is something you normally do when you have blocks of different colors through the top um okay yeah so I'm working on on jumpers and I'm working on socks Um, and I have so many ideas of things that I want to do. But I think I need to I need to finish some things. <laughs> um, but you know what it's like. I mean, why stop yourself from doing things and casting on things if it's something that makes you happy? So 
but finishing things also makes me happy. It's all about a balance, isn't it? Well, okay, I think that's all for this episode. Maybe next time I will have a new dyeing space set up and I'll be able to show you where all the dyeing happens and that would be fun, I think. Yes. If you're after some hand dyed yarn, there's plenty of stuff in my shop on Etsy. You can find it by uh, just looking for Rose Hip Island on Etsy. It's a lot of sock yarn and uh, I have some white gum wool based dyed up and some other non superwash 100% Australian wool bases. Um, yes. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, I always enjoy sitting down and catching up and um, share with you all the little things that I have been working on. And if you have any comments, suggestions, anything, please comment below on YouTube or send me a message on Ravelry or Instagram. Uh, I'm always very happy to hear from you. If anyone's going to the Sheep um, and Wool Show in Bendigo in July this year and you're interested to catch up, please let me know. I am. Um, really looking forward to going this year and I have a few people that I'm catching up with and it's going to be great but I would really like um, to see as many people as I can it would be fun to have a bit of a uh, catch up or meet up there's not really a good space at the show to have uh, a group uh, meeting and sitting down I don't think there really is anywhere but um, yes if you're going to Bendigo and you, you like to catch up please let me know that's all for today. I am um, going to go inside and reheat my tea and warm up a bit because it's a bit cool out here when the sun's not out. Um, so yes, I hope you stay warm and snuggly and um, that you enjoy your knitting or whatever you're making at the moment. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.